Hello everybody and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. Today we're going to be analyzing international business ma machines. I sound like I was from Wisconsin there. Um, IBM, otherwise known as. Um, and this one came in by request down in the comment section of one of my other videos. If you have a request um, of a stock you'd like me to analyze on the channel, just put it down in the comments. I'll get the ticker on the whiteboard behind me. I have a pretty big list. If I move my head, you can see that it's going um, all the way. Um, we have a whole other column coming up, so um, it might take me a little while to get there. Um, if you are a Patreon member, I prioritize those. Um, and then any stocks that are in the S&P 500, I post those on YouTube for free. The rest I post on Patreon, which is $5 a month. Um, and if you join there, you can get a big discount to the full Cyclical Investors Club service um, over on Seeking Alpha, where um, I have dozens and dozens of articles, um, chat room where you can chat with me or direct message me anytime. Um, several strategies that I don't talk about too much are in full detail um, here on the YouTube channel or in my public articles. Um, so those links will be down in the description if you're interested. I also have a 25% off link for fast graphs down in the description, um, which is the graphing service that I'll be using here in this video. Um, it helps um, the analyzing process move more quickly, especially in the early stages when you're really sifting through stocks. So I've used it to sift through um, literally thousands of stocks. And so you can usually within a minute or so, um, you know, I can decide whether it's something that's worth spending a little bit more time on or not. So it works pretty well there. And it visually displays, displays things well, um, especially when we look at IBM here. So as always, this is not individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. All right, so let's get into IBM. This has been an interesting one, I think, because it, it works. I've used it for several years now <clears throat> as an example of when to one of the reasons for selling. And that is when a, st a business basically kind of gets to the latter stages of growth where they are basically stable to potentially shrinking. Um, they've kind of grown as big as they can grow doing what they're doing. And either competition is kind of taking away some of their business or they their addressable market for what they do is just full. Um, and then they get to where they're kind of more paying out dividends and just trying to kind of maintain where they are. Sometimes they're more successful um, with that than others. But the, the main metric that I always talk about on this channel for determining what was normally a steady earning business like IBM for decades, really, um, when to potentially think about selling it. And the best metric for that that I found is this is assuming we're not in a recession. It's not a cyclical business, but is the three year revenue trend. So that would take revenues from three years ago and look at revenues today. Uh, I usually just look at an, like an annual basis um, or trailing 12 month. Um, so it'd be more like trailing 36 month in this case. But you go back three years ago and if revenues were higher back then than they are now, that's usually the first, one of the clearest and first signs that the business is basically pro done growing for the most part and may start to shrink. So when that happens, that's usually a good time to sell and go find something that has more growth um, unless perhaps it's a very stable business and the dividend yield is very high. Like I'm talking like seven, eight percent when I say very high. Um, and then you can potentially collect it more like a bond. But uh, for me, when three year revenue turns negative, I'm almost always selling unless it's like a recession or some easily explainable reason for it. So that happened with IBM in 2014. And we actually see the beginning of 2014. So right here. So in 2014, revenues were just slightly lower than they were in 2011. If you, if you did a three year, this is showing earnings. Revenues are usually a little bit more of a leading indicator. So that would have been the time really think about selling. Um, if you would have sold then, you would have missed out on all this down period. I'm not sure how much the S&P 500 is up since then, but it's a lot. You've basically only got an inflationary return and that's only because of this recent 
spike upwards um, that we just had. So if you would have sold um, right here and then before this last little spike, um, you would have basically just been underwater if you include in you know 30 percent inflation since then um and the s p 500 would have is more than doubled since then so a very poor investment after that because what happens is when you val when you are doing a valuation of a company like ibm or any company basically you're you're taking the current earnings trend usually or expected future earnings trend um and extrapolating it out into the future like many years usually like usually i do it for a decade but some people do it longer so you can you extrapolate that out and so when the direction uh when it's going up and you extrapolate then it's it produces a very different price than when you're going down and you extrapolate so when earnings start to you can see that the price fell actually before these earnings the earnings is this dark green shaded area here the stock price price is stagnated here and then it fell before earnings actually fully went down now maybe there was some guidance involved there but investors could see i i was investing in so i could you could see that revenues were struggling the market was looking at the revenues which is what a good investor should have been looking at back here um and the smart people in the market got out and they went and found better investments like microsoft or um, Amazon or Google or Meta, Facebook, um, and then they've done fantastically well while the older business just slowly kind of stagnates and potentially dies. Now it's it's this can go on for a long period of time, and it's possible to eventually reach kind of a bottom um, where they've shrunk and then they start to grow again. They develop a new business, which is sort of looks like what could be happening now. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with this recent price spike. It probably has to do with AI. <clears throat> There's not really an explanation for it right now um, in, in terms of actual earnings or anything like that. But if we shrink this down to recent times, so we can see the earnings growth has been negative well before COVID. And then we, it got even worse. And now it's just starting to very slowly recover earnings wise. I went and checked. These guys are actually issuing new shares still, so it, it, they shouldn't have to do that when they're they've been in business like over fifty years or something like that. I mean, um, for an established business, so it's just it's just kind of weird. Um, and that, but the good thing is that's accounted for in the earnings per share because as shares go up, um, it's unlike a lot of the other companies where they're buying back shares. Um, where I have to kind of control for that. It's already controlled here, and we only see 5% earnings growth, basically. Um, looking forward, that's what analysts see. In this past year, that's what we saw. So when we look at the current valuation, well, first of all, before we get to that, the reason I gave this whole big, long lecture is because if we um, look at the earnings growth here, it's negative. So that immediately just, I'm not buying it if it's negative. But if we did put 5% earnings growth in here, the 10-year the expected return would still only be like 4%, which is worse than the average stock in the S&P 500. So, and that's mostly due to the fact of this big price rise, um, which is like 40%. I assume this has to do something with you know, AI or something like that, but who knows? The market does weird things sometimes. Um, maybe the market sees some future business that they're trying to price in here, but right now, earnings are only expected to grow mid single digits, which is barely above inflation. Um, so the valuation just is bad. I mean, it's it's not even based on ex current expectations. So you have a 20 PE, 5% growth. That's a four peg ratio. Um, to me, I would be if I owned it, I would be selling unless I had some really compelling um, article. I looked at some of the, I mean, reason to think that it's going to accelerate growth a lot more than this. I looked at some of the metrics I look at for my growth strategy, and they didn't look really well. Off this little bottom here, they looked okay for like this year, where, but it didn't look like they were gonna be sustainable at like a fast level or anything. So 
Um, this looks like just pure speculation to me, unless there's just something that I don't understand um, understand about it. And so, yeah, it's just a pretty easy avoid for me. And I've been avoiding it for a decade, <laughs> um, pretty much preaching this kind of same lesson for many, many years now. And I mean, we, ha we do have this recent spike, but if you compare it to Meta, which I own, I mean, Meta is just completely blowing it out of the water during this, even with this spike, I mean, Meta is up like two or 300% or something off this bottom. So, um, so yeah, I just, at least right now, I don't think there's much, much contest here. And I know people sometimes don't like to hear that, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. It let the people that want, that want to buy a stock like this and take a chance to do it. But for me, it's, I like to win at least 80% of the time. So I don't want to sit through this type of period here where it just goes nowhere, um, hoping that something good is going to happen, right? Um, when you can find a stock, a business where there is good things already happening and you can pay a 20 PE for that, <laughs> you know, it makes, I mean, if we just look at, let's just look at, I don't know. I have a Microsoft maybe. It's probably more than that now. Yeah, it's up at 37, but I mean, it wasn't long ago. Down here, you could have got it in the 20s. Um, that's probably an extreme example. I haven't looked at the valuations on these. I think, um, yeah, Meta is now just over 32. I think maybe Google would be what you would probably want to look at. So there you go. So would you rather own Alphabet at a 22 PE or so or IBM? I mean, to me, that's not really much of a contest unless you think like AI is gonna destroy Alphabet and help IBM or something. And, and that's just really just speculation as far as I'm concerned right now. I don't think anybody really knows how that's gonna shake out over the next five years, you know? So so those are my thoughts on IBM. It's an avoid for me. Um, if you do a valuation analysis, it's just really expensive unless you think they can grow 15% or something a year for 10 years, which I just don't see how that happens right now from what we know about it right now. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. If you found this useful, hit the subscribe button. Um, if you have a request, drop it in the comment section and I'll see everybody in the next video. Bye.